I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Dr. Roland Chai, CEO and founder of IOTEX. Roland, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time today. Hi, Ashley. This is Roland. Good to have me here. Thanks for having me here. You're very welcome. Uh, let's dive into what MachineFi Labs is working on and, and IOTEX and um, connecting dApps to you know, real world solutions, something I feel like is very necessary and this is very timely uh, for this. Um, but I would love to start the interview from just a high level overview for those who aren't familiar with IOTEX on you know, what solutions has your team been working on and then we'll dive into everything in the ecosystem. Sounds great. All right, let's kick it off just with a with an you know a high level overview on you know sort of the, the main functionalities of the ecosystem. Yeah, um, for IOTAX, um, so we started back in twenty seventeen with three co founders, you know me and two other co founders, and we expand the team you know, through the years to like a fifty each people right now. So the things we are working on is like the intersection of IoT and the blockchain. Right, so we, we in the past four years we have built a lot. We have built this layer one blockchain from scratch, which is EVM compatible, um, like a high QPS POS blockchain, which has been supported by all the top exchanges in the world. And on top of this chain, so we're building a lot of things. Um, so for example, we have our bridge connecting IOTAX network to uh, other crypto networks like Ethereum, Polygon, so far, so on so forth. And we do have our wallet. Explorer SDK, you know, so that's why people uh, actually developers can use this chain for DeFi, DAO game, NFT applications. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, so we have a layer two we call the web stream, which is a layer actually, you know, connecting with the machines, interacting with the machines. Uh, so that's kind of like a sick resource of IOTEX and also facilitates our conversation about, you know, the machine file. Mm -hmm. Great intro, Roland, and great to hear about the EVM compatibility. I'm really interested in diving a little bit more into the IoT aspect as well. You know, having started IoTex in, in 2017, as you mentioned, um, layer ones uh, and layer twos were a lot different back then. And, and I feel like IoT uh, as an industry itself has also grown a lot since then. Um, can you talk about how you've, how you've grown and, and how you've pivoted through watching the growth of DeFi and trying to keep up in the IoT sector? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think. DeFi gave us a, like a very great lesson about uh, how to do the incentive or like a mechanism design in the Web3 space. So by having a very good mechanism design, you can actually code, code start your network for, you know, for example, like a lending or yield farming or DAX, right? I think this kind of like idea has been, um, been learned by not just us, also by NFT players, by game, like a major players so far, so, so on and so forth. So machine fi um, is such an interesting like the web three methodology we actually called the term last year um, we want to use the token or mechanical design to jump start the machine networks uh, which will connect in the real world to the blockchain world right mm -hmm. so if you look at like the uh the blockchain actually which is just driven this one trillion dollar web three economy that giving uh, like a bridge or some like uh, a way to interact with the physical world, it can actually drive for 100 more, like 100 times bigger, the real world economy. So that's why we, we do think machine networks are the necessary bridges, you know, between these two worlds. And machine fire is such a, like a fascinating Web3 methodology trying to, you know, uh, jumpstart the machine networks by incentivize the deployment of machines or like a monetize or tokenize the utility, actually like a, most likely the data coming out from the machines and also enable the self-involving governance of machines in the long run. Um, so that's kind of like the things we, you know, we identified in the past, in the past four years um, and we are fully like in the week of building the machine file. Really cool, Rowan. And, you know, coining machine file, I think is, um, I feel like a lot of people don't understand the full, um, you know, the full scope of what machine learning is going to become. You know, if everyone says how uh, machines and AI are going to take over every industry and every job. Uh, but, and, and, you know, people think of AI as like robots and like uh, moving automated and AI. But I feel like the where we're at with it right now in the beginning of machine fi and integrating uh, blockchain into it, 
it's more basic machines and like things that you wouldn't expect to take over the world. Um, can yeah. you talk about what are the first uh, implications of actually integrating the blockchain dApps into some of the basic machines? Yeah, I think you mentioned a great example about AI, right? So AI is basically as you mean, you already have a large scale machines producing the necessary data. So you can build some sort of intelligence on top of this one. So machine is actually addressing the, uh, the problem, which is under the layer, AI layer, which is about how you orchestrate or like uh, organize such a large number of machines all together, right? Trying to incentivize them to do the things you want. So this is like an essence of machine five. So definitely like uh, there are several verticals we're looking into uh, in terms of like go to market or application of machine five. So uh, a very big kind of category, so we are, we are working on is called like a location based services. It's LPS type of thing, right? Think about if you have like a, the POI data, like a point of interest data for objects, for people, for cars, for everything, and you pumping those data into the Web3 space, then there will be a lot of very interesting applications can be built on top of. Uh, for example, like uh, Pokemon Go, right? Just like everybody likes Pokemon Go. And also some new financial products, like a traffic derivative, like mm -hmm. some sort of insurance, or even you can do like an X to earn type of apps, you know, having drivers to drive from A to B to earn some sort of tokens, or doing like a Uber in a decentralized way, right? So those are the things that actually can just fall into the location based uh, kind of service category. So this is mm -hmm. kind of one big category here. Mm -hmm. um, really? You, 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 Keep going. Sorry. Uh, yeah. If you look at the other categories, I think another pretty big one is kind of like social or like a fitness. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you have your uh, like a rain, smart rain or whatever, like a tracker, fitness tracker. They just like a walk around, running around, making friends, interacting with other people and trying to you know, have a token design around those stuff. I think this will be pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Basically, you can program how people actually behave in the physical world by using tokens, right? So you can incentivize, incentivize them to be more health, healthy or like you can incentivize them to go to like a certain concert or like, a, you know, soccer games, whatever. Um, you know, it's really a kind of way, you know, Web3 can program the physical world, which I'm very exciting about. Mm -hmm. That is very exciting. Um, and especially with location based, I feel like before, uh, even with Pokemon Go and technology, people are able to spoof locations and, you know, with Internet of Things and IoT devices, if it's a real world device, it's going to be located somewhere in the world and they're able to track that data on the blockchain, I think is important and then integrate the functionality through that. So definitely looking forward to more on those location based services. Rowland, thank you for that. And, you know, I'd love to follow up on that question uh, with a question about, you know, the IOTEX blockchain specifically. Um, can you talk about why IOTEX uh, technology is the best for integrating with IoT, you know, whether it's just the, the speed of it or having to manage multiple devices, you know, how did you build it specifically to solve this solution? Yeah, um, I think we, we, we can do this because we have layers of technology, right? So let me start with the layer one. So layer one is a POS blockchain we built from scratch from 2017 to 2019, which has been in production for almost uh, three years, processing 45 million transactions, pretty, pretty stable and fast. Um, so this chain is EVM compatible. That means like a Web3 developer, token developers. So this should be pretty easy to have a token, actually a smart contract deployed on the chain, you know, to have to, to get it uh, up and running. So this part would be like uh, something really easy for Web3 developers. And on top of this, so we have like a Web stream, which is a kind of computational oracle from machines, right? So this is layer interact with a device. So we make it very easy for IoT developers, you know, hardware guys to use uh, by having an SDK, you know, integrating into their machine or device and talking with TrueStream, uh, very similar to, uh, you know, how Substrate works, mm -hmm. right? Substrate basically, you know, offers a template for people to run a parry chain for Polkadot. So TrueStream is basically, you know, offers such a template for those people who want to launch a machine five project mm -hmm. to run off-chain compute. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this off-chain computer will actually, you know, periodically um, produce some sort of proof based on the machine's behavior and telling a layer one contract, oh, your car has been running five miles, uh, you know, today or from A to B. So give this guy 10 tokens. Hmm. Right. So this is on principle how everything works together. Incredible. 
And you know, you know, you mentioned building iterations and working on this for years, um, and it takes a lot of capital and a lot of team, as you mentioned, your team's continually growing to, to continue to build this. I saw in the recent news that IOTEX had just raised another 10 million uh, in capital to help expand. Um, so first of all, congratulations on that. And I'd love to know more about that. And you know, what are the main focuses uh, with the, 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 the latest raise in where you're focusing that capital on expanding? Yeah, so we actually uh, kind of uh, identified this machine fine uh, methodology last year. And we have some initial success around this machine fine methodology. So this year around March, we started this fundraising and we are very lucky, you know, so we, we got like support from very top players in the IoT space, like a Samsung, uh, um, and, and as well as crypto space, like uh, the Jump, you know, Draper, Team Draper, uh, which has been, you know, very supportive for us. So for this one, we get very close very quickly because all the people have a very strong belief in machine fight. And with this, sort, uh, you know, this part of the fund, so we are going to grow the team continues to build what we're building and actually launch something um, like a real in the in the remaining of this year. Mm -hmm. Wow, incredible. That's great to hear about those backers and having Samsung and major players uh, involved. I feel like it's only a matter of time before um, all of Samsung's technology is sort of integrated with blockchain. Um, are, are you seeing other, you know, may, like just overall in the IoT space, um, how much traction and interest have you seen from those other companies? Uh, like obviously the ones that are invested in your company, but just as the industry as a whole, their interest in integrating with blockchain and using the technology to further advance IoT. Is that a major uh, role for IoT industry? Um, yes. So we can look at this, you know, from both sides, right? For how IoT can help with Web3. So definitely a lot. Because Web3, we are always talking about adoption, you know, growing the number of non-crypto users. Mm -hmm. And IoT has a such great source of users. So for example, Samsung, right? So they have like hundreds of millions of cell phone users, and they have the intention to, you know, get them involved with Web3 and the machine fine. So definitely like IoT has already have a lot, already have a very large kind of, kind of user base right now. I think that will help like Web3 a lot. In terms of like how Web3 will help IoT, I think it's even more beneficial, you know, for IoT have Web3 because IoT is very fragmented, right? So everybody is doing their own stuff. Uh, so there's no kind of unified standard or way to play. I feel like this machine fight is actually the like, key to address this problem, fragmentation problem, by having like an incentive layer, you know, or like the machine layer built on top of everything. So, you know, people can actually voluntarily connecting their machine to this layer to try to make money, right? As long as, you know, on the finance level, so area, everything is aligned up, I don't, I don't think like those tech issue will kind of uh, remaining. So that's, that's how I think like the IoT, uh, you know, sector can be unified in such a way. Definitely. And I'm looking forward to those sort of merging into one as it continues to grow. Um, and now talking about connecting people's devices into the blockchain, you know, from those who are familiar with how DeFi works, you know, the blockchain isn't able to get real world information and real time prices, um, or in the case of IoT, perhaps the blockchain doesn't intrinsically know about location data and other external information from IoT devices. Do you also have to use Oracle technology um, or some kind of uh, input from real world information into the blockchain with IOTEX? And is that built in or, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. I think Oracle is a very generic term, right? It's basically talking about a data ingestion machine or right? like, like a data ingestion system. So uh, the true stream or web stream I mentioned about is actually like our off offline Oracle uh, talking with machines. We cannot use Chainlink for sure, right? Because, you know, so we're talking about like hundreds of millions of machines. So there must be a very scalable technology, you know, to dealing with the data coming out from those machines. And of course, like a layer one blockchain, no matter how scalable it is, you cannot handle those hundreds of millions of data machine, like, uh, you know, in a second or in a few minutes, you cannot. So that's that's how it works. Like we funnel all the data from those hundred millions of machines to the to the web stream layer, you know, doing some like a streaming computation and 
having the proof, which is a very concise, maybe one bytes or like a 10 bytes kind, kind of proof, go into the layer one contract, layer one uh, blockchain, and saying, you know, the machine has been done something. And the layer one, con uh, you know, the layer one, the smart contract on the layer one, we're actually in charge of, you know, how to do the token economics. So, which makes the system very scalable. Great. And, you know, we keep talking about having IoT devices or having cars, being able to monetize uh, at those devices so they can actually earn uh, cryptocurrency uh, or money in, in, in some way. Um, how close are we or where are you guys at right now with IOTEX in having people that are already involved uh, with cryptocurrency um, or just have IoT devices to be able to monetize those and, and how would that work? Um, so, so like I said, we are working on this like a location-based services vertical, right? So we do have like client-side devices. So one is we, what do we call PayPal tracker? It's a hardware open source GPS tracker plus other 16 sensors on this one. And we do have a software version out for this PayPal tracker, which is an application on the running on the phone. For this kind of client-side devices, we have like a half, you know, um, half a million users kind of signed up right now. So, which is still growing, you know, as time goes by, and on the on the on the on the um, demand side, which which is something like we're building, is called Pop Proof of Presentation Protocol. So, which is an abstraction of, uh, you know, so where those people are, where the cars are, right? Then we're going to expose those things to the developer, to having them to come here to build something really like amazing, which is they cannot build on top of, you know, for for example, Solana or Avalanche or Ethereum. Definitely very exciting. And on the on you know on the cryptocurrency side with the IOTEX currency, um, it are you using just uh, the native token in the protocol at, at least at first for the for the earning and for the transactions and communication between devices, um, or or how does that work on the on the actual transaction side? On the transaction side. You know, from uh, the device to the web stream for now, so there is no charge, right? It's kind of open and free. And in the future, we may have some sort of token economic design kicking here. And for all the layer one transactions, that's definitely like an IOTAX token. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And what is the best way for people to get involved um, as an end, you know, as a, a person who's interested in cryptocurrency or just interested in IoT devices? Um, how can they start contributing and potentially start earning from IOTEX right now? Yeah, so there are like a couple of ways, right? So they can take a look at our website, iotx.io or machinefight.com. I think we have those infor you know, information almost everywhere on these two websites. And they can always follow our tweet. It's IOTEX underscore IO. Or they can join our Discord channel. So we do have like a developer type of channel for machine fight developers. So if you're, you're super interested, you should come here, you know, talk with other developers and also our people actually call to you on this channel about, you know, having some, uh, if you have some great ideas about machine fight. Mm -hmm. Great, Roland, thank you so much. I will leave the links for IOTEX and machine fight, uh, the, the websites in the description, as well as the Discord and Twitter, as you mentioned. Um, and, and it's just great to hear about having a strong developer community, because I do think, um, developers are super important to get off the ground and get end users involved and people that don't know how to code to be able to be able to monetize. So thank you for building all of this. I'm really looking forward to seeing those updates that you mentioned. Um, all the best with everything in, in IoT and, and looking forward to having Web3 and IoT merged uh, more than ever. Thank you to IoTex. Um, so appreciate this information. Uh, let's thank definitely you. follow up in the near future. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashton.